Hello everyone and welcome to the Life in the Universe pandemic series. So this is just a set of short talks about topics to do with life in the universe that I think are interesting uh, and maybe you might find them interesting as well. And if you've looked out at the virus and everything going on around you, you may have even wondered where did all this begin? Where did all this life uh, start? So that's the topic of today's little discussion. Where did life begin? And Charles Darwin even thought about this. He came up with the idea of a warm little pond where he thought that the right chemistry might have collected to produce the first living cell. Some people today even think that life may have started somewhere else and come to the earth. Uh, that's an interesting idea. We can't disprove it. But of course, we still have to explain how that life began somewhere else. It must have occurred in one particular place. So although uh, life could well have come from another planet and we can't, as I say, disprove that right now, it doesn't really get us anywhere. We still have to try and think about the sort of environment that could give rise to early cells. So we tend to assume that life did occur on the Earth, on the early Earth, and then consider the sorts of environments where such a process, the origin of life, could have happened. So where are these places? One place people think about are hydrothermal vents. And these are vents formed in the deep oceans where the plates are breaking apart and spreading apart. And there you have very actively um, gushing fluids coming up from the crust into the oceans and precipitating these mounds of minerals called hydrothermal vents. Some of these fluids contain lots of sulfides and when they hit the ocean water they go as black color, these black sulfidic minerals which is why some people call these features black smokers. There are other types of hydrothermal vents as well that are a little bit more alkaline. People have thought about those as sites for the origin of life. But why, why these vents in general as places for the origin of life? Well, one of the exciting things about them is that they provide some of the things that we think are crucial for an origin of life. We need some energy, energy to make molecules, to be able to construct these first parts of living things. We need somewhere that will concentrate chemicals, a bit like when you add dishwasher into a bowl of water, it tends to uh, dilute. So molecules in the open oceans, for instance, will tend to dilute. So what we want to do is to be able to collect them in one place for them to be able to react to make these first cells. And of course, these hydrothermal vents have the sort of chemistries that we might like for a place to originate life. Hydrothermal vents are interesting places because when you look at the mounds, you find they're full of tiny little holes. They're a little bit spongy. And people imagine those small holes could have been like early cells, provided an encapsulating environment where lots of interesting chemistry could have happened in there. And then eventually, when the cells were fully formed and had membranes, they could break out and take over the world, so to speak. But they would have started in these little nurseries inside the hydrothermal vents. There are other interesting things in hydrothermal vents. There's lots of iron and sulfur. And these elements tend to be very good at moving electrons around and doing the chemistry for the origin of life. And what's really intriguing is that if you look in your own cells, you'll find that many of the biological uh, catalysts, the enzymes that do chemistry in your cells have iron sulfur clusters, these clusters of iron and sulfur elements attached to each other that help do catalysis. And some people have suggested the uh, intriguing uh, idea that these iron sulfur clusters are remnants of the hydrothermal vent environment. In other words, inside your cells uh, is the memory of our origin of life in hydrothermal vents where we might think that iron and sulfur and nickel and other elements were taking part in these chemical reactions. This is called the iron sulfur world hypothesis. It's not proven, but it's an intriguing idea. There's other good things about vents. They have, uh, as I say, nickel and other elements that can uh, facilitate chemical reactions. And people think that some of the earliest reactions necessary for metabolism, for the metabolic pathways of life could have begun in these vent environments. They're not the only place that people think about. Uh, a little bit like Charles Darwin's warm little pond, some people imagine that the origin of life occurred on land instead of in the deep oceans. If you go to Yellowstone National Park and you look out across that landscape, you'll see these bubbling cauldrons of volcanic water produced in a hydrothermal geothermal region of that volcanically uh, active region of the US. And some people think that these uh, land-based pools of hot water could also have been good places for the origin of life, where water was being circulated, lots of interesting chemistry is happening, and out of those ancient bubbling cauldrons of hot water, uh, life would have emerged. There are other places we could imagine as well. Some people think that asteroid and comet 
impact craters would have been very good places for the origin of life. We know that the early Earth was being bombarded by asteroid and comets uh, much more frequently than the present day Earth. An asteroid and comet impacts can deliver huge amounts of energy, huge amounts of uh, energy from the kinetic energy of the object hurtling in from space, slams into the Earth and delivers all that energy into the crust of the Earth. And if you do the calculations, you can work out that asteroid and comet impacts can heat up the surrounding area for hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of years. And that heat would have generated lots of circulating hot water and lots of interesting chemistry, a bit like our hydrothermal vents. There is one big difference with uh, impact craters, is that unlike hydrothermal vents, they can happen in any geology. Hydrothermal vents tend to be associated with basaltic volcanic uh, environments in the deep crust, the ocean crust. But because asteroid and comets can happen anywhere, you can imagine that the chemistry of these hot hydrothermal systems in impact craters could have all sorts of different chemistries, depending on where the asteroid or comet happened to hit the Earth. So you could imagine that impact craters could host all sorts of experiments, if you like, in the origin of life. So that's another environment that people have considered. One should also say that maybe um, these sorts of chemistries, these sorts of molecules for the origin of life were being produced in all these environments. It may be that uh, none of them specifically were exactly the right place for producing the molecules needed for life. Perhaps the whole of the early Earth was a giant pre-biological reactor. Having said that, the first cell must have emerged somewhere. There are other really intriguing ideas that some people have. Uh, other people have suggested that the origin of life happened in clouds. And the idea here is that organic compounds, uh, building blocks of life would have been produced maybe in the oceans, maybe in our friends, the hydrothermal vents. And they would have come up to the top of the ocean and burst in small bubbles into the atmosphere. And these bubbles would have drifted through the Earth's atmosphere and been irradiated by the much more intense ultraviolet radiation that we think would have existed on the early Earth. And in being irradiated, the organic molecules would have been made more complex, a bit like we see on Saturn's moon Titan, where methane in the atmosphere is irradiated by ultraviolet radiation and forms these long chain complex molecules that, that give Titan that brown or orange coloration. The same sort of idea for the Earth. UV irradiation would have produced these more complex molecules. They would have rained down back into the oceans and circulated continuously until eventually in some happy bubble, uh, the first replicating molecule uh, emerged. We tend to think that the origin of life happened in a hot place just because intuitively, intuitively that makes sense. Uh, lots of energy, lots of chemistry occurring in a hot environment. But some people have suggested that may not have been the case. Could we imagine an origin of life in a very cold environment? We don't know whether there were polar ice caps or glaciers on the early Earth, but if you think about the idea for a moment, it's not completely outlandish. When you cool or freeze water, it tends to exclude salts and organic materials that collect at the intergrain spaces between the grains of ice that are formed in a glacier. So the idea is that glaciers would have formed, uh, organic material on the early earth would have been excluded from the freezing water and would have collected along the grain boundaries and been concentrated there. And that concentration would have brought molecules together to form the early molecules of life. So that's the idea that these cold environments might have taken a lot longer. Chemical reactions would have been slower because it was cold. But if there was plenty of time, maybe some of these cold environments would have given rise to life as well. So these are just some of the ideas. Uh, none of them are proven. All of them might be right. And as I say, maybe uh, molecules to form early living things were being produced in all of these different environments. But the origin of life happened and that first cell emerged. And that first cell gave rise to all of the life that we see on the Earth today. It's a very intriguing observation that the biochemistry of living things on the Earth all seems to share a common ancestor. We all have the same genetic code, uh, the same fundamental biochemical architecture. And that raises some really interesting questions about uh, the origin of life and where it happened. It could mean a number of things. It could mean that life only started once and it's an extremely rare event. Uh, and that would mean that possibly life is rare anywhere else in the universe as well. If it happened only once on the Earth, perhaps there's some chemical reaction in there that's extremely unlikely, so that elsewhere in the universe, the origin of life would also be extremely unlikely. Uh, another alternative is that the origin of life actually occurred many times, and there were lots of origins of life. It's just that the type of biochemistry that gave rise to life on Earth today was the most successful, and it outcompeted 
all of these other types of origins of life. Uh, we can't uh, test that very readily, uh, but it might mean that the origin of life would be a common thing in the universe. It's just that certain biochemistries are more successful than others. And on our own planet, uh, one type of biochemistry dominated life and came to represent the whole tree of life. But that raises yet another question. Could it be that these other origins of life are still out there? Some people have suggested that buried under some rock somewhere or deep in some hydrothermal vent, there are these other origins of life still lingering. But because they weren't very successful and our own origin of life that makes up most of life on Earth, dominated life on Earth, perhaps this other origin of life is hidden away and restricted to some vent. And that would mean we could go out and look for other biochemistries of life. And this has been referred to as the shadow biosphere idea, the idea that there are shadow biospheres, other biospheres on the Earth today that represent these alternative origins of life. And that's a very thrilling idea because it would mean that we could actually go and look for different types of biochemistries. But so far, there's no evidence that there are other types of biochemistry uh, hidden away on the Earth. So that's what many people think at the moment. Uh, there's lots of details in there, but the fundamental fact remains that we actually don't know where that first cell emerged that gave rise to life on Earth, what the chemical conditions were that gave rise to life, and what the particular environment was where the origin of life occurred. I think it's one of the most fascinating questions about life in the universe, because not only does it tell us where we came from, but it might also tell us something about whether we expect this to be common or an extremely rare event elsewhere in the universe. And so in some sense, the answer to our question, are we alone in the universe, is buried in the answer to that question of where the origin of life first occurred and how it occurred. So that is uh, the question of where did life begin? One of the most fascinating questions about life in the universe. Thank you for joining me. Take care of yourselves.